Yo, what's up, friends? It's Dave. Hope you're having an amazing day. It's Tuesday, October 25th, about 8.48 in the Eastern Time Zone. Hey, do me a favor, say hello, let me know where you're watching from, all that jazz. I'm going to make sure my screen is all squared away the way I need it and all that stuff. And I'll pull this up my phone real fast so I can interact with you a little bit easier. Uh, so if you guys have questions or comments as we go, I'll be able to see them here on my phone. Let me just pull that up. Cool. So hey, one of the things that I see people struggle with as they're trying to create their thing in the world, they're trying to put a book out there, they're trying to get a course out there, they're trying to sell their coaching services, they're trying to do whatever, is they just one day show up. They just one day show up without any fanfare, without any preview or anything leading into it. They just show up one day and they go, hey, I have this thing, buy it. Hey, I have this thing, it's really cool, buy it. Hey, this thing's really cool, you should check it out and buy it. Oh, here, have this thing, buy it. Hey, my thing's out, my book's out, my TV remote control is available, it's cool, you need it, it solves your problems, buy it. Now, there are some situations where that might work, especially if it's a surprise thing. But generally speaking, if you look at the things that are super successful, if you look at the stuff where people spend a lot of money, high ticket things, things like that, where you're like, holy cow, I can't believe they sold that many things. They often have a lead time going into it. They have a runway or they have what's known as a launch, a launch sequence. Look at what Apple does when they launch new products. And we're talking about two, three, four, five, six thousand dollar things sometimes. Generally, also, they have stuff that's in a few hundred dollar range, but not inexpensive stuff. And they'll send out an email like a month or two months ahead of time. And they'll say, we have a special event coming November 11th or whatever. Right? Come join us for. And then they have some weird name that you can't quite figure it out, but it makes you think about it. And you're like, whoa, I wonder what they're doing. And then everybody gets all geeked out on the internet. They're like, oh, I wonder what Apple's going to do. I wonder what they're going to do with the launch. And a lot of times some of the secrets are out and I believe that they probably leak some of the stuff themselves, but they build up all this anticipation. And then they might even put out a small trailer movie on YouTube or something like that where you can watch it on social media. So they put this stuff out there and then it's, you know, geeks out their whole audience. They get all, you know, start to salivate like Pavlov's dogs, right? They're like, oh my gosh, what's coming? What's coming? What's coming? Oh my gosh. And then they launch this thing and they're like, yay. And they say, you can buy it now. Or sometimes they say, you can't even buy it now. I can't even pre-order it now. Sometimes like you can't pre-order it for like a week or two from now. But generally right then they open the cart or they say you can buy it or you can buy it soon or you can pre-order it and people go crazy and people stand in lines and you can't get on their website because the website crashes. And we're talking about one of the biggest companies in the world, right? And they still have problems, um, you know, scaling all that traffic. What a great problem to have, having so much traffic during your launch that you're like, oh my gosh, it's blowing up our servers or we can't process payments fast enough. That would be really cool for you, right? If you think about movies, uh, I've been following Dwayne the Rock Johnson on uh, social media for a really long time. And he's really good at hyping stuff that's coming out. And he's been talking about this Black Adam movie for literally years. And then, you know, I guess it launches this week, or maybe last week. Um, but like within the last 90 days, 60 days or so, he's been ramping it up. And he's been showing behind the scenes. And he's showing a little sneak peek. And as they get a little closer, he's doing more. As they get a little closer, they're doing more. And then it's like, boom, and now it's out. And now he's, it's like chumming the waters for sharks, right? It's like, or fish, right? It's like, oh my gosh, look, we did all this stuff. We got all everybody all excited. And now our thing is out. You can do that too. And you should do that too, no matter what it is you're offering, right? You should not just show up and be like, hey, buy my thing. I just noticed that my pen matches my shirt. It's because Russell Brunson sends me so much stuff. Speaking about launches and leading into launches, he's good at that stuff too. Here, buy my, buy my pen. It's awesome, right? No, you need to have a launch. You need to, to go into it. So the guy who taught me how to do all this stuff online, Jeff Walker, usually about once a year, he does this thing called Launch Masterclass. And it happens to be coming up this week. I think it starts the 28th in a couple days. I'll put a link here in the comments for you so you have access to it. Yes, it's my referral link. Let me see if I can pin it for you. Boom, there you go. Uh, he teaches you a step-by-step -step sequence of how to launch anything. This is really good specifically. It's good for almost anything except 
if you have like emergency type services. So if you do like, you know, water restoration services that are like an emergency type thing, you might not be able to do a launch for this stuff, right? Because you never know when that event's going to happen. But pretty much anything else outside of that, uh, you can do a launch sequence, an online course, a book, coaching services, a movie, maybe you have a documentary coming out. Like, I don't know what it is you're doing, but there are some things you can do and you can do it as simple as doing a couple days of an email sequence. You can do a couple days of a video sequence that you pre-recorded. What Jeff does, which I think is amazing, because this is so meta. He's like, got, got a launch inside a launch. He tells you how to launch. He shows you how to launch. He teaches you how to launch while he's doing a launch. And it's pretty amazing because like, okay, this is what you do in a launch. And then he does it. And you're like, oh my gosh, that was so amazing. Like, yeah, because that's what works. You could do a live thing like he's doing. He's going to do back-to-back-to-back live days of teaching you specifically what you need to do. And there's... Generally speaking, three like key pieces that you need. And inside those things, which he's going to teach you, one of the things you really need to focus on is what are the problems that you solve for your audience? Talking about those things, maybe, maybe uh, poking them with the stick a little bit, right? That's an old copywriting term, but maybe agitating the problem a little bit in your pre-launch. Like, hey, do you have this problem? Maybe you have this problem. If you're like me, maybe you've had this happen to you. If you're blah, 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 maybe this has happened. When, when that happens, then you can't do this. When that happens, you can't be at your best. When this is going on, it really sucks and blah, blah, blah. So maybe you're agitating the pain or maybe you're hyping up the pleasure. Hey, when this thing happens, it's so cool and it's so awesome and everything flows so well. You have a great experience, right? So it's mostly either avoiding, pleasure, uh, avoiding pain or being attracted to pleasure, right? But in your launch, in your pre thing that you're doing leading up to whatever it is you're putting out there, you want to agitate that a little bit or hype that up a little bit or talk about that. It's like, do you, do you struggle with this? Then you should do this. Uh, do you really want to have this awesome experience? Then you should do this, right? And you start getting into that a little bit. Or you want to look at things that have these features, have these benefits, will help you achieve this, whatever. So then when the thing comes out, you almost go like, oh, wow, well, isn't it really cool that I just happen to have a thing that's going to solve all these problems we've been talking about, right? And then it, it sounds so simple. I know you're laughing at that. I know you're like, dude, that's so dumb. But literally, that's how these things work. And if, if you want, I'm sure you can look these up on YouTube. Uh, if I come back to this video and watch it, maybe I'll put it in the comments if I go find it. But if you, even when you watch Apple's uh, keynotes that they do, they will say, like they have these different people show up on the screen. Tim Cook is like, okay, let's talk to so-and-so. Let's talk to Dave, the product designer. I'm like, hi, I'm Dave. And do you have problems with the processing speed on your computer because you're trying to edit all these videos and whatever, and then it just slows down your computer? Well, we solve that with new Apple M1 Pro silicon, whatever, our own chips. We have our own chips that are blah, 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 blah. And they'll help you do this so much faster. So they actually do pain, resolution of pain, and then pleasure, right? I don't know if you just caught that, but that's what I did. I'm like, do you have this problem? It really sucks, and your computer's kind of choking on trying to, you know, process a video or edit a video for you, and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to launch this thing. Well, we have a solution to it. It's called blah, blah, blah. We have our own chips now. It's called the M1, and we got the M1 this, and the Pro, and the what, whatever, and then you can have this, and, and one of the devices, we have two chips, and it processes 80 bazillion megahertz or whatever, Right? And it's going to help you create this really awesome stuff. And sometimes I go, look at this awesome stuff that was created on it. If you watch the commercials on TV for the iPhone, <clears throat> excuse me, they've had um, commercials recently that I've seen for the iPhone 14 where they shoot the whole commercial on an iPhone 14 or they show some of the, the stuff that you can do on it, the editing and the photo features and the video quality and all that stuff, right? Which is more of a, a move to pleasure. It's a pleasurable experience. And then they're like, go buy this thing. Go buy this $1,000 thing, essentially. Right. It's not a $2 thing. But this works whether it's a $1,000 thing, a $10,000 thing, a $3 thing, whatever. You have to build up some hype. You have to build up an audience. You have to chum the waters. You have to have, get, get people leaning in if you want it to be successful. Because then everybody's leaning in. They're like, oh my gosh, what is Dave doing? What has he got going on? What's happening? What's coming? What are these things you're talking about? And then you're like, whoa. Imagine if you had remote control 
It had buttons on the bottom directly for the streaming services that you use most, like Amazon Prime Video and Netflix. Well, guess what? It's out today. You can get it, right? And then people are like, whoa. And then they buy it, and then you have a successful launch. There is, <clears throat> there's a, a series of things that happen in all of these things. And the beautiful thing about Jeff Walker in his launch masterclass is he teaches all this stuff, but I want you to pay special attention because you know I'm a geek about this and I talk about it a lot in my podcast, Unleash the Awesome. If you haven't checked out that podcast, you probably should. There it is. <clears throat> I actually had Robert Cialdini, Dr. Robert Cialdini, who literally wrote the book on influence and he had a new version of his book come out. And we talked about the levers of influence. If you've never read that book, you should. If you are in the people business in any way, shape, or form, which means if you sell anything or you're a speaker or a trainer or a coach or write a book, you're in the people business. If you really do anything, you're in the people business. You should read his book, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. The cool thing about <clears throat> what Jeff does with his launch sequences and his launch masterclass and his product launch formula and his coaching program, of which I've been a part of for a really long time, Jeff was my original online mentor way back in the day. I was introduced to him quite accidentally, and he literally changed my life with the stuff that he teaches in here because he built his sequence on top of the stuff that Cialdini talks about, these psychological levers and triggers, Jeff calls them, that get people excited about something or get them to take action or get them to move. And that's one of the reasons why I loved it because when he was teaching it, like I was a student of those things, and I'm like, oh, there's this, there's commitment consistency, there's reciprocity, there's whatever, right? There's all this stuff built in. And so Jeff not only does that stuff himself, but he teaches you. He's like, look, you should build into your thing, into your launch sequence from day to day, whether you do it as simply as an email sequence, or again, you want to do live training videos like he's doing, like back to back to back. You want to build in these things, not only within the, the session that you're doing each day, but then from session to session to get people to come to day two. And then what do you do on day two? Or what do you do in email two? Or what do you do in social media post two, right? And a little bit of it has to do with kind of recapping what happened yesterday and where we're going next, right? A little foreshadowing into what's happening next and then agitating another problem a little bit and then solving for that problem and then perhaps highlighting another problem and then going like, oh, and we'll talk about that tomorrow or we'll get into that in the next email or we'll get into that in the next whatever. And then you go on to the next thing. So then you're, you're giving people quick wins. They're learning. You're kind of agitating the problems a little bit and building up the idea that you are the solution to the problem. And then you go, here you go. Here's this thing. Right? If you want to watch a super condensed version of something like this, go watch uh, one of the infomercials you see on TV. But it's like not the 30-minute full infomercial or the hour-long infomercial. Like those 90-second to 3-minute infomercials. They are kind of like this whole thing built in there, right? I think of the one where like the people are having a hard time cooking spaghetti or something, right? And they're like, do you have a problem with cooking spaghetti and the ladies pulling spaghetti things out of the, a box of spaghetti out of the pantry or the cupboard or whatever, and it's like spills all over or some dude's trying to put it in a pot of boiling water and like hot water splashing, he's burning himself. And they show all these like quick snippets of people like, uh, like, people failing at pretty mundane, easy tasks that people shouldn't really be failing at, but they're agitating the heck out of that problem. Like, do you have a problem with this? Do you have a problem with that? Look at this. Does this sound like you? Have you ever had this thing happen? Blech. Well, now we have pasta magic or whatever the hell this, that thing was called. Right? It's like, you can cook pasta now and half the time with no mess, blah, blah, blah. Right? Agitating the problem up front, showing you exaggerated examples. I think about the Snuggie and the, the other blanket things, right? Snuggy, the blanket with arms or whatever. People trying to eat a snack on the sofa underneath a blanket and they can't figure out how to get their hands out of the blanket and they spill the popcorn everywhere. And everybody's like, oh, Dave. There's Dave again, messing everything up and throwing popcorn all over the place, right? Agitating the problems. And then at the end, like, we have a solution. We have a blanket with arm holes. You could stick your arm through there and eat your popcorn and feed popcorn to your lover and all this stuff. And isn't that exciting? Right? So it goes from, like, agitating total pain to we have a solution to, oh, look at how awesome and pleasurable this is. Right? So if you watch any of those, like, infomercials, especially if you watch a 30-minute infomercial or even, I don't, I haven't seen one of these in a long time, but, like, one of those 
hour long infomercials, they do a launch sequence right in there. That guy, Phil Swift, who does Flex Seal or whatever, he's like, oh, look, we have this thing and the water is coming out of it. We slap this Flex Seal on it and it stops the water. But wait, what if we cut a hole in the bottom of a boat and put a screen door on it? It's like, wait, what? Why do I put a screen on the bottom of a boat? That's so dumb. But it's like a exaggerated example of like, but then we're going to put flex seal on it and the boat's going to float. And then there he is in the boat going, hey, look at me. I'm filling the boat and it floats. Right? Agitating a problem in a crazy way, showing it's a solution to it. And then you're like, well, hell, if it can hold Phil Swift in a boat with a screen door on the bottom, then it's going to fix my problem. Right? And people make that automatic leap in their head. It is not magic. It's not a secret. It's not like, it's none of that stuff. This stuff is very specific. There's a formula for it. There are steps to it. And once you know it and understand it and apply it, then it works for you. How do I know? Because I've done it in my own stuff too. And because I've been in Jeff's, Jeff Walker's sphere of influence in his world, in his orbit for like, I don't know, 15 years now or something like that. I know a lot of people in his space and other people that you know that you wouldn't have known 10 years ago, eight years ago, whatever, you now know they've come out of his orbit. They've been in his space. They launch their stuff with his idea, his concept. If you've seen any successful online launch, they have used 80% of what he teaches. Now they might put their own spin, their own flavor on it, their own thing. That includes people like Stu McLaren, Ryan Levesque, Amy Porterfield, me, even Russell Brunson, right? They launch it in a very specific sequence. Now, again, they might, you know, there, there are some things you can do with your own way that you show up. Maybe you want to do live videos. Maybe you want to do recorded videos. Maybe you want to do audios. Maybe you want to do a sequence of emails. Maybe you want to do a sequence of blog posts, whatever. I would encourage you to get your, I put the link there in the comments pinned for you. Get your spot for this launch masterclass and watch it from two angles. One, as an active participant and take notes and learn from Jeff. But from a meta view, just take a step back periodically and go like, oh, wow, look at this. Jeff is doing exactly what he teaches. And here I am in his thing, doing his thing. I'm doing exactly what he talks about. What if I did this for my thing? What if I did this for my launch? What if I did this for my book? What if I did this for my course? What if I did this for my Peloton that I'm selling or my iPhone that I'm selling? Like, what if I did this? And even ask your question, uh, ask a question like, what if only half of this was true? What if only I got half of the results? What if only a little bit, would that be better than what's currently happening? And for a lot of people, the answer is yes, because you're not doing anything. You're just showing up on the scene and you're like, I got some Gatorade. Hey, you want some Gatorade? It's, uh, I feel like orange flavor. It's really good. You want some Gatorade? Versus, man, you work hard. You're an athlete. You're a, even if you're not an athlete, you're working hard. You're working hard around the house. You're doing whatever. You're sweating. You're losing electrolytes, blah, blah, blah. Your body is dragging around. You need to replenish those electrolytes and you could do it with, boom, Gatorade. That's, even in the 30 second commercial, a lot of times that's what they're doing. Right? Now, not always. Sometimes those bigger brands, because they have bigger budgets, sometimes they just show a commercial that like you see it and you're like, wow, I wonder what they're selling. Or like, what is it? What was that all about? Right? But they're just trying to put a brand in your head. But even then, you'll you'll see sometimes in their commercials where they're like, You work hard, you need Gatorade, you need to replenish those salts and electrolytes and potassium and sodium and all that stuff. And we can do it with Gatorade Zero. Right? We have all these flavors. And, and a lot of times, and this is what Jeff will teach you in his launch masterclass, they don't always talk about the features and the benefits. That's where a lot of you get this wrong. This is where I was getting it wrong for a really long time. In those commercials, even, even in the Gatorade commercial, they're like, you work hard, you are sweating, you need something to replenish the stuff that you're losing with your sweat, you need Gatorade. It tastes delicious. They don't, in those commercials, say usually stuff like, your body is losing electrolytes, potassium, and sodium, and they're losing them like this, and so you need to replace them. And it was scientifically formulated to have this and this and this, and it's going to replace it at this level, and you should consume this much so that it replaces your electrolytes. But no, they don't even have time for that. They got 30 seconds. They're like, you work hard, you need to replenish your fluids, Gatorade's the solution for you, right? 
you're working hard. You're going to feel awful if you don't replace, replenish your fluids. You should do it with Gatorade, and then you'll feel awesome, right? Agitating the problem, you're going to feel really awful if you don't have this thing. Oh, wow, look, we have this thing that's going to solve your problem, and then it's going to be so awesome afterwards. You're going to shoot baskets like Michael Jordan and LeBron James. You're going to be able to dunk a basketball, right? <laughs> that's kind of what they depict there, right? They don't make that leap of faith, but as you watch it, you're like, oh, yeah, if I drink Gatorade, I'm going to be able to run a marathon. Because they show someone running a marathon. When they first start, they're like dragging, and then they drink some Gatorade, and now they're running faster, right? And they can't, on those commercials even, they can't make claims like that. When you're selling your stuff online, you can't make income claims, and there's all kinds of disclosures you have to, you know, make through the FTC guidelines and all that jazz, right? So sometimes, instead of making all those claims, you can just go through this sequence of triggers, mental triggers that move people, the levers of psychology and influence that move people, and weave it Here's the thing. This is what Jeff will show you. If you if you still feel at your core like selling is is awful or sleazy or you don't like to sell or you feel like when you're selling you're pushing too hard, then you need to watch how Jeff does it because he's the most laid back, kind of soft-spoken dude and he just goes through his whole thing. And he's like, let me teach you this thing. And here's what all these people do in the launches. And these are really cool. And you should check this out. And look what this lady did. And look what this guy did. And look at this lady. She sells um, decorative door hangers. Or she sells Victorian era dress patterns. Or look at this person. He sells accountants information to accountants in the UK. Like, Look at this person. He gives you all these case studies. And you're watching them all. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he never like gets gotten like loud and like ah and never like super hypey. He just kind of like, hey, look at this stuff and it works. And let me show you another example and it works. So if you're somebody who likes that approach and you want to be more or like you don't have the energy like I do, and you're like, ah, you can't show up like this, or you don't want to show up like this, they definitely need to watch Jeff. <laughs> Cause there are times when I show up like Jeff, I'm kind of like, meh. If you want this, great. And that's why I was originally drawn to him because I saw him on Brendan Burchard's stage at Experts Academy. And Brendan, for three days, is clapping, you know, to Macklemore every time he comes out. Hey, Macklemore, yeah, da -na 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 -na. And then all the stuff, like all the Macklemore, he's, and he'll say, he's like, jump around like a geek. It's like, oh, yeah, hugs, handshakes, high fives. Frank Kern gets up there, he's dropping F bombs galore, all this stuff. And then this guy, Jeff, comes out. He's like, Hey, I'm Jeff. What's up? He's in jeans and like a button down shirt. He's like, yeah, I'm going to show you how to do this launch stuff. And it's pretty cool. And check it out. And I'm just a dude from Durango, Colorado. And I like to ride my bike in the mountains and go skiing with my family. And here's my thing. Check it out. And here's a sequence of things. And like, I was mesmerized by him, mesmerized by him. Cause it was like, it kind of flew in the face of everything that was going on. But because again, I was a student of psychology and influence and selling and I was in a sales role at the time in corporate America, I was like, whoa, this guy is genius because he doesn't come with like all that crazy loud energy. He was like, yeah, yeah, I'm Jeff. Here's my thing. Check it out. Hmm. I don't know. And that was an event where he was actually selling something from stage and people just started running to the back of the room. And I was like, oh my gosh, look at all those people buying. All right. And I started like doing the math. Wow. That guy just talked for like 90 minutes. He never raised his voice above this. He was just like, oh, hey, yeah, that's cool. Check it out. That's pretty neat. You should see it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, if you like the stuff, I don't know, maybe it's not for you, but if it is, you can just go to the back of the room and, you know, we got so many seats available and yeah, hope to have you join us, whatever. <laughs> he was just like, Whoa. I don't know if he closed more than anybody that weekend, but it was, it was a lot of people. Again, super laid back, super chill. But he had a specific sequence he was talking about, a specific thing. And you can actually do all of these things in one presentation. If you go back and watch this, I may have done a lot of them in this presentation. So you could do it in a 24-minute presentation. Right? I've been agitating problems, talking about solutions. I've been talking about the solutions and how awesome it would be. How awesome it would be if your thing sold and you sold out. What a great problem to have. You heard me say it before. What a great problem to have. You don't have enough of your thing. Everybody wants it and it sells out. Wow, what a great problem to have, right? Pleasure. Oh, don't you hate it when you, sh you put something out to the world and nobody's there to buy it because you haven't like chummed the waters and got people to buy your thing, right? Agitating problem. So really, if you don't, this is, 
This is the only, the only, the only, I'll say it for three, three times for emphasis, the only series of things, the only masterclass, the only course, the only coaching program, whatever, however you're going to gauge with it, it's the only one that I recommend to 100% of my students, my coaching clients, the people that are in my sphere of influence want to do this stuff. Because if you can get this right, when you get this stuff right, everything else tends to fall into place. There are other things you do. Maybe you need to, maybe you're building a course, maybe you're building a membership, maybe you're building a, an ask campaign, or you have a quiz funnel that you're setting up. Yes, all of those things are pieces of the puzzle. And depending on what you're trying to do, I may recommend to you, you might want to go check out this course, or you might want to go check out this class, or you might want to go get on this webinar, or you might want to go see this. Maybe you're doing courses online and I talk about certain tools, or maybe you're trying to do memberships online. I talk about different tools, right? None of those things are for 100% of the people that I talk to. Jeff Walker and what he teaches in his launch masterclass, his product launch formula, his coaching programs, all of that stuff is for 100% of the people that I talk to in my sphere of influence. Because if you cannot launch something successfully, you're going to have a really hard time. It's going to be like pushing that rock up the hill like Sisyphus, right? You're just going to be like, ah, it's always like, why is this so hard? Instead of asking yourself, why is this so hard? Ask a better question. What would this look like if it was easy? And what it would look like if it was easy is if you launch things with a sequence and you had things put out a week or two, three weeks ahead, depending on what it is you're launching, a month ahead of time, right? I like to call it the runway. How long is your runway? Usually what I say is if it costs a little more, if it's a higher ticket thing, you probably want a little more of a runway. Jeff sometimes uses that terminology too, right? Just like an airplane, right? If you're trying to get an airplane in the air, if you have a tiny little Cessna or Citation or something, you can do a small runway. If you're trying to launch some of these huge cargo planes that the Air Force has, you can't do it on a small runway. You need a much bigger runway because it needs to get up to speed and Bernoulli's principle and all that stuff. We're not going to talk about physics and aerodynamics today, but you can't land or take off those giant planes on a small runway. So same thing with a launch. Same thing with a, a sequence going into selling something. If it's bigger thing or people don't quite know you yet and you need to do a little more work, you need a little bit more of a launch runway. And so maybe you start a month, 60 days, 90 days ahead. Right? I'm watching people who are selling books and they want it to be a New York Times bestseller. I'm watching them do it six months ahead of time. Right? I don't know when Amazon officially allows you to start pre-selling or pre-ordering your stuff and how soon in advance. Like I don't know all the specifics of that, but you'll watch people. Whatever that the earliest point they can do that is, they start doing it and they start talking about their book bonuses and they start talking about live Zoom Q&As and stuff they're going to do. Like Ryan, uh, Ryan Holiday for his book, Discipline is Destiny. Uh, I bought, I don't know, five copies of it, five autographed copies of it. I got a autographed copy of the original manuscript because I was in his pre-order funnel and his launch going into this thing. And pretty much the day it came out, it was an automatic New York Times bestseller because they had pre-launched it and pre-sold it and had so much built up excitement about it that then he's like, oh, my book's for sale and all these people bought it. And it's like, wow, New York Times bestseller. Not accidental. Hey, Ed Davis, what's up, my friend? Thank you for saying hi. Not accidental, not accidental. A launch sequence, a launch plan, he had it in there, right? So think about what it is you're doing. If you want some help, go check out Jeff's thing. I'll put the link in the comments for you. I think it's gamble.com slash LMC 2022, Launch Masterclass 2022, it's coming up. Yes, I think he does replays and all that stuff, but if you can allocate time to be on there live, he's really good at answering questions and will stick around for a long time. He often has, I'll just warn you now, something called the super secret segment that usually does that's not recorded. So if it's if you stick around live, which sometimes the sessions can go an hour, two hours sometimes, sometimes three, uh, at the very end, they'll do a super secret segment. So they'll kind of cut, the screen will go blank, and then they'll say, hey, thanks for sticking around for the super secret segment. And he only does those live. So if you want to catch those, and those are like bonus teachings that you don't want to miss if, if you can help it. So I would allocate time for this. I would, if you have stuff on your calendar, clear it. Seriously, this is something that 100, this is the only, listen, I'm going to say it again. This will be the fourth time. 
This is the only thing I recommend to 100% of the people that I work with, clients, customers, students, whatever. Because if you cannot launch something successfully, it just makes everything so much harder. So much harder. Think about restaurants in your town. They're like uh, just getting ready to open. And the ones that are like coming soon and we're going to have this thing. Or maybe you can go to the restaurant. A local restaurant did this not too long ago. They basically had a food truck that was they was offering some of their stuff ahead of time. And you could go like once a week and they would tweet about it or put it out there. It would be like, we're doing lunch at, you know, Tuesday at noon, you know, close to our location that we're getting ready to open. And you could go and sample it and try it. And like, oh my gosh, this is so good. If this is good, imagine what the full restaurant experience is like. And they did that, I don't know, for like two months leading into it. And it probably had a lot to do with just, they needed to generate some revenue, but they built up a ton of excitement in the community and then they basically said, hey, if you liked all that, now our restaurant is open and you can come. And yeah, we're taking reservations. And like it starts next week, but we're, we're taking reservations right now. So then when they opened, you couldn't even really go and get a table, which is a great problem to have. And so people are showing up and like, wait, I can't get a table. It's like, no, we're actually, we have reservations now for like the next two weeks, but we can put you, we can get your reservation for three weeks from now or four weeks from now. And they were booking people that were showing up to eat that night to book them for three and four weeks in advance. And now they had a full reservation schedule for like a month and a half or two months for a restaurant that just opened. Think about that. That's a restaurant. That's a local business, right? The brick and mortar. A lot of you are like, well, how does this apply to brick and mortar? I'm telling you about the only thing this does not apply to is emergency type stuff or like, I guess, funeral stuff, which I guess is probably also emergency type stuff. It's hard to do a launch around your funeral or that your casket and your gravestone needs, right? Or water restoration services or fire restoration services or hail damage to your roof services or any of that kind of stuff. But you could even do a launch for seasonal stuff. Maybe have a lawn care business. Maybe have a tree trimming business. Like here in the Northeast of the United States, you're not really doing landscaping and tree trimming stuff in the winter time. But you could be spending time in the winter doing a launch, agitating stuff. Listen, when we come out of this freeze, when the snow melts, you're going to need some stuff and th think of all these branches or we had this ice storm and so a lot of trees are in bad shape. So you want to get on our schedule now. The guys that do the pressure washing for my house, they do well. It's soft washing, right? It's not pressure washing because the pressure washing gets in under the siding, causes mold and other problems. But same same idea, right? House washing. They do they do a launch sequence. They do that same exact thing with postcards and emails and stuff on their Facebook pages and stuff in the wintertime because they're not out there doing pressure washing in the wintertime. Mostly, they might be doing some commercial work. Maybe they're doing uh, parking decks where they're inside and they can do that kind of stuff, but they're not doing residential homes. But they start a launch campaign and they do exactly that. They're like, listen, the snow has been building up and doing all this stuff and it's been sitting on your deck or it's been up against your house and blah, blah, blah and, and all this stuff. And now your house is dirty and you're going to want to get your house ready for the springtime and you're going to have guests and you have graduation parties and you have all this stuff coming and your house looks ugly and disgusting. You're agitating the problem. We are booking right now for when we start up in the spring. Call now to reserve your spot and get a discount. So... We're booking right now, right? A little bit of scarcity uh, because they only have so many spots. And also, we will give you a discount. Or if you book now or if you're one of the first 100 people to book or whatever, right? And so they do a launch campaign for, for house washing services. And it's like, oh, my gosh. And I told the guy, Zach, when he came last year, because I have my house done like every two to three years or so. I was like, man, you got me in your launch campaign. Like I got the postcard in the mail. And it's you know, pretty much what I just told you. Your house probably looks disgusting and you're going to want to throw parties and whatever. And you're thinking about getting your grass cut and whatever. Uh, get on, get us on the books now to get your house cleaned. And I was like, oh, that's so smart. Yeah, okay. And I did. I called him and got him on my calendar. Tree trimming, same thing. Like, hey, your trees probably need to get looked at because we have those ice storms and they might be in bad shape and there might be some dangerous limbs agitating the problem. Call now to get on our calendar because if not, like we're going to book up quick. Right? Pretty much anything. Pretty much anything again, except like super emergency services. Go do this. This will be one of those things, and often is one of those things, where pretty much every year, I think every year, I think I can say with confidence, every year, a handful of people 
get back to me. So a lot of times people I don't even know, people that have been following me on Facebook or people following me on YouTube or people following me, whatever, on my email list, I don't even know who they are. I've never met them before. And they send me an email and they say, oh my gosh, thank you so much for leading me to that. I wasn't sure how to piece all this together, but Jeff makes it seem so simple or so easy, or he shared this one thing. Even I can do this. Thank you. I'm finally going to launch my whatever, my book, my course, my coaching program, whatever. And I'm like, yes, that's why I do what I do. That's why I come on Facebook on a Tuesday morning for 35 minutes and tell you, you have to figure out how to do this right. When you do this right, it just makes things so much easier. I'm not going to say easy, right? Because this is all this stuff takes some work and some effort. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But part of the reason why you get stuck, part of the reason why you don't have success, part of the reason why you're not having the success that you would like to have is because you haven't thought about a launch runway or a launch sequence or a process that goes into launching whatever it is you're looking to launch and then launching it. And then there's some things you should do during the launch, which we haven't even talked about in this broadcast, but Jeff will share with you. And then things you need to do after you launch it and stuff you can do at the end of this launch to set you, yourself up for the next time you launch it or your next, maybe you're not going to launch that, but you're going to launch something else. There's stuff you can do. You could say like, Hey, you know, maybe you missed it or maybe we sold out or maybe you missed the deadline or maybe you missed whatever. There are things you could do. You could, there's all kinds of stuff. We're not going to get into it today, but you, you could even bring some people on in a different thing. You could launch a down sell. You could set up a wait list for the other t- next time, whatever. Jeff will talk about a lot of that with you. But seriously, go do this. I've not done a Facebook Live or come on here or talk about stuff in a while, right? I've got some other projects I'm working on, head down, working on a lot of my own stuff that I'm getting ready to launch. But I wanted to come on today and make sure you knew about this because it starts this week. You do not want to miss it. I'm telling you, it will fundamentally change how you do things and it will make things easier for you if you follow what he teaches, okay? So go check it out. Again, it's at gamble.com slash LMC2022 for Launch Masterclass 2022 with my buddy, my friend. And now I can call him a friend, longtime mentor, Jeff Walker. Do not miss it. Yeah, I, I will be there too. I am registered. I'll be there too. I will be in the live thing. I follow it because every time I watch it, I learn something new and I apply it to what I'm already doing. And it just takes my launches up another level. And like I said, I got some stuff I'm launching. So I want to make sure I put my launch sequence up against what he's teaching and there's new stuff that kind of changes each year and he stays on top of it with him and his cohort and his coaching program like because he sees all the launches that are going on so there's some subtle changes some tweaks some ways to deliver we could never deliver live videos before like in an easy way but now we can do that and so that's kind of how he's changed his thing he used to do recorded videos and now he pretty much does it all live so if there are changes too he'll, he'll share that i will be there taking notes i hope to see you there too later